Welcome to Good Land, everybody, the land where everything is good. It is so awesome to be back here again in the valley, be here with my buddies, Michael, and our special guest, Spencer. Hello. How's it going, very Spencer? Excited. I'm very excited to be here. You know, I just love chatting with people, and I love the first episode, so, you know, it's good to be here. Yeah, well, thank you. We appreciate it. <laughs> Welcome to the valley. You're the first one to lay eyes on the valley itself. So. Yeah, the secrets <laughs> that Goodland has to offer here. Um, <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, we're we're glad to have you. We'll have to uh, we'll have to give you the tour at some point. We'll draw up the Sweet. map and we'll you know, we'll give you the rundown, and show you the sites, uh, the sites Perfect. here in Goodland. Um, but yeah, so we're. Uh, Michael and I are stoked to have Spencer, our first guest on the show with us. Um, Spencer, why don't you go ahead and tell us a little bit about yourself? Uh, well, I'm Spencer. Hi, I live in Star and I am a construction worker. Right on. Spencer, <laughs> is, uh, Spencer is one of the kindest people uh, that I've ever met. Um okay. We we met over Twitter. I think was our technically our first interactions, right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we have a uh, we have a bunch of friends in common, and so just we became mutual followers. And um, like I said, Spencer is one of the nicest, coolest people I've ever met. So um, once we actually got to start hanging out in person, it just we just took off. So that was that was great. Um, yeah, Spencer, I have been told by a reliable source, uh, that reliable source being yourself, that you uh, very much enjoy um, movies and TV and video games. Would you consider yourself a, a pop culture aficionado? Uh, probably exactly that, I guess. <laughs> but, you know, I, I try not to be, I don't want to use the word snobby, but I try not to be the snobby type you know if, if a movie's fun then who am I to say that they shouldn't watch it or make it you know like uh, yeah. you know, like Justice League it got a big bad rap but you know the movie's fun and you know I watch it time to time and yeah Marvel's better in the movie department not the tv show department but who am I to say that it's not fun you know yeah so if something's fun then you should enjoy it without anybody giving you too much grief right on yeah man no that's great that's a, yeah that's a good outlook to have because i think especially in our you know our day and age where everything is is on the internet and we you know we expect that kind of instant gratification from things um it's so easy to see these uh discourses on these topics turn hostile really quick yeah so that that mindset of just like what you like and, and let people like what they like yeah yeah no exactly yeah no. it's great i remember like the simpler times when i was a kid when i would just like any movie or any tv show you know yep. <laughs> and i'd always hear adults talk about like oh well that movie is horrible you know it's boring i didn't like it and i'd always be like why it was fun you know yeah i just like that simple time of being a kid now once i've gotten like older a little bit i'll notice like okay yeah you know i'll rewatch a movie and be like okay you know it wasn't as good <laughs> as i remember as a kid but i just like that simple time of just everything was good you know when you were yeah. a kid you just had fun and appreciated it. And, you know, like Norrin said, there definitely wasn't this polarizing conflict with so much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I completely agree. And just, you know, being able to just turn your brain off for a little bit and just, you know, enjoying like what Norrin said, enjoying what you enjoy and just being able to, you know, like what you like, you know. Yeah, I, I think it took me until high school to like watch a movie that I walked out of and thought like, I didn't like that. Because up until then, it was just this kind of blind like acceptance of like, cool, I'm watching a movie right now. <laughs> this <Yeah>. is good. <laughs> like not really comprehending what, what made something good or bad. Like I, it may have been until high school that I like walked out of something and was like, oh, that, that kind of sucked. 
<laughs> yeah, it was it was until high school that I I mean I took a film a film theory class in there and that year was the worst time of, in my life to watch movies because I just overanalyzed everything in a movie and then after that year I was just like why am I doing this I, I remember watching this YouTube I used to be obsessed with this channel. It was called um, Everything Wrong or Cinema Sins. Cinema mm-hmm. Sins. I used to oh, exclusively that was a watch one. them. And for like two years of my life, I would just nitpick these movies till the end of the earth. And then after, you know, after I start watching them, I started enjoying movies again without like, oh, that was cliche or there's a plot hole. And after that, I was just... You know, I enjoyed movies much more because I didn't, I wasn't so critical of them. Yeah, no, I, I totally get that. Um, I'm a creative writing major. And so I spent um, my years of, of schooling talking about like how to build plot and, and structure and stuff like that. And so coming, coming from that background and watching movies, it, it's really easy for me if I want to, to dig into the meat of a movie and like track the character development and stuff like that and find Mm -hmm. out like exactly where it kind of went wrong um and it's like as as fun as that can be sometimes it is more fun to just kind of shut your brain off and just let yourself like something i I always say there's a difference between a good movie and a fun movie Mm. so like there's there's a lot of times where i can walk out of a theater and be like that that movie was technically really bad, but I had a lot of fun watching it. Like one of my favorite <laughs> movies is the Warcraft movie. Um, mm, like, yeah. I think it was from like 2016. <laughs> oh, that's, yeah, that's the one based on World of Warcraft. Yeah, that movie sucked. Um, <laughs> it's a really bad movie because they tried to take this really kind of convoluted overarching story and condense it down. And like, if you haven't played World of Warcraft or if you don't know the lore of it very well, then the movie just makes no sense. <laughs> but, yeah, um, yeah. But totally. it's so fun. It's it's like a total guilty pleasure of mine. I love it so much, <laughs> even though it, it by all means is yeah, a really awful movie. I always think of like the Tobey Maguire Spider Man movies. Those are the ones that are like my guilty pleasure. Where like if I just want to watch a movie, I know it's horrible. <laughs> there there are some parts that are very cringy. Just horrible you know acting effects whatever it is but sometimes I just want to watch Tobey Maguire as Spider-Man yeah yes like number three that I I love it because I hate it you know I love it because everybody hates it it's just I mean it's fun you know seeing three different villains you know fighting Spider-Man and but man is is it bad (laughs) (laughs) um Spence, what what has been catching your eyes lately? Um, uh, while we're on the topic of things that we uh, like to like to watch, what have you been watching or playing recently that has been um, kind of keeping you busy? Um, well, in the watching aspect, um, we actually Quincy and I just watched all of the Maze Runners. Mm. And we're currently in the middle of watching all the Hunger Games movies. And mm. I think the Maze Runner movies, I remember them sucking and like everybody hated them. But when we went back and watched them, we were so confused because they were like, they're great movies. Like, I mean, the, you know, some of the writing is bad, but that's like the nitpicking part of me. But I don't remember why they got such a bad rap. But yeah, that's just what we've been watching, you know, movie wise. And then my go to TV show, I've watched this series probably like 10 times, but Scrubs, just whenever I have downtime, I just throw it on my phone and just let it play in the background while I'm doing everything, almost to the point where I can memorize what they're going to be saying next yeah. and, you know, saying along with them and stuff. So, um, that's just kind of what we've been, you know, into lately. Yeah, right on. Um, yeah, I I don't think I've seen all the Maze Runners. I think I've only seen the first two. Um, mm. I don't remember. Is there four of them? Did they split the there's last three? One? There's there's only three. Yeah. Um, 
Okay. I see. I've I only seen the, the one. So the first was it the first one, Michael? Uh, I don't. I've only seen the first movie. I haven't even read the books, even. Mm. So yeah, there's four. But I haven't read. I, I am not a reader at all, <laughs> not even a little bit. But there's four books, and I only know that because I googled if there's a fourth Maze Runner movie. And they're like, ah, eh, well, they might make it. But yeah, I think um, I think the fourth book was technically a prequel. I. I listened to the series on audiobook when I was in high school, when I was working for the mm. parks department. Um, I, I used to work for the Meridian Parks and Recreation Department, and I just painted He's tables so all summer. Whoa. Siri had something to say about that. Um, <laughs> I, uh, I Calling you the, out. <laughs> yeah. Um, I worked for the Parks and Rec Department, and I was a painter, so I painted tables all summer long. Mm. Um, and so my, that entire summer, my skin was just covered in blue paint, um, cause I just got drenched in it. But, um, while I was doing that and painting tables all summer, I listened to audiobooks. Um, and so I listened to the whole Maze Runner series and I remember really, really liking the first book. And then I did not like the second or third one <laughs> very much at all. Um, and that was, I think that was why I didn't get through all the movies is because they were so different from the books. Like even the first one, which the first Maze Runner book is so good. Um, mm -hmm. The first Maze Runner movie is, is way different from it. And so it was, it was one of those things where I think I probably would have liked the movie better if I hadn't read the books. Gotcha. Is Maze Runner, that's kind of grouped into that like dystopian futuristic phase that we had going on. Yeah, it's yeah, totally a few years. Years. <laughs> well, we had Hunger <laughs> Games, Maze Runner, Divergent, uh, Divergent, yeah. Divergent. Yeah. Divergent. Well, I've never even, I've never read yeah, or they were seen just... those, but uh, uh, read the books or seen the movies, so I don't really know what it's about. I... But <laughs> I've read and seen both the Hunger Games and Divergent, and both are okay. They're kind of, at least for me personally, they they started off great. You know, first book has like awesome concepts and dystopian um mind frames and such but then as it goes on you know by the third book i'm just kind of pushing through just trying to finish yeah. it <laughs> so i feel like with those those just books, like just recycling the same like i mean even in the hunger games movies it's kind of just oh no the big guy's gonna kill everyone no we gotta stop them so yeah yeah that New hunger games <laughs> That phase in storytelling was really interesting how just that uh, that young adult dystopian novel kind of took over pop culture like that was all that was being put out was like mm -hmm. was young adult dystopias. Um, it, yeah, it, it was really crazy how that just kind of had a grasp on on pop culture for for a few years. Yeah, I mean, I could think of like, yeah, like Fahrenheit 420, 420. No, that doesn't sound right. Or fifty, <laughs> like yeah, that. That, that, that seems then, like that's probably something else. <laughs> that's the book we're writing. We'll write that book. <laughs> and there's this other one. Oh, The Giver, and I remember that was really popular around the same time. Yeah, and all just I don't understand the. I mean, I get it because I I like those that type of storytelling, but it's slowly starting to become a reality. I mean, especially with Maze Runner, you know, it's all about you know this virus that's infecting everybody and it's watching it now it's like this is a little too real <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> it always seemed like so far off especially like some of them like the giver and fahrenheit 451 they always seem like so exotic of concepts and then right here we're living you know this crazy world you know crazy day-to-day yeah. -day life i never would have imagined you know, that this event would happen, much less would, like, continue past a year. Like, this yeah. is just ongoing. Like, it's changed everything. <laughs> yeah, that's an interesting, that's an interesting point. That, like, what was so popular in the media that we were consuming kind of became our reality. Um, so if, if that's what happened, like, from five, well, that's it's got to be older than that now right i was gonna say five years but hungry <laughs> has to be like at a least little bit more and now yeah so like 10 or so years ago five to ten yeah and that yeah. became our reality now what trend from media that's currently happening is going to be our reality 10 years in the future 
Mm-hmm. Oh man. Um, I hope not the, the not this. I guess. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully, <laughs> anything but this. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, I, I, think, I haven't are, really seen any trends that. Well, or think any about new, you know movie trends. I, I think like well, and th- that's exactly the the point that I think I'm getting at here is that we're not getting new movie trends, right? We're getting like reboots and stuff. Yeah. So I'd say like superhero, you know, fantasy, those have definitely been picking up and at least becoming like more popular in the media. Yeah. Um, so I'd say that definitely, especially with like Disney plus and everything coming out with like Marvel and DC, like you said, Spencer. So I think that's definitely something that is becoming more popular. So who knows, maybe if we could have that become the reality in yeah. 10 years now where we have like super that would be awesome yeah yeah it's I think, it seems you know, so far off <laughs> yeah no kidding you know, yeah I maybe mean, maybe all of this dystopia stuff will uh will start mutating people and we'll start getting <laughs> the superpowers out of it <laughs> this is our this is our origin this is the human race yeah seriously uh, we can only hope here. yeah <laughs> i mean i i i think that the future i mean this this kind of ties in with the movie and movies and stuff but you know i have i have an oculus and i definitely think that's where you know viewing pleasure and gaming pleasure is definitely going to be taking us you know maybe not on the scale of like ready player one but definitely like probably in about 20 years everybody who's a gamer is going to have one of those tracks that you you know hook up to and like you're running i mean that's already people already have that but those are like twenty thousand dollars right now yeah but um i definitely think that i mean it won't be cheap but it'll be cheaper and that's just where we're going to be moving towards i at least i think yeah i I, no i i think you're right i I definitely think that it is inevitably going to head in that direction because i mean even now with like you know, the PlayStation 5 just came out and the big thing on it is the adaptive triggers. And it's all about Mm -hmm. like increasing the immersion that you feel while playing the game. You know, the natural next step to, to foster that immersion is to put you in it. Um, I, I watched this uh, YouTube video that was talking about, um, there was like a, a tech conference where a bunch of different companies kind of went and they were showing off their new tech ideas. And uh, it was, Niantic, the guys that make Pokemon Go, they were there and they had like a proof of concept uh, using like um, augmented reality glasses. Um, And it was kind of showing how you could use the augmented reality glasses to like play Pokemon Go. So you could like put on the glasses and you'd like see the Pokemon in front of you and you could like throw Pokeballs at them. And Mm. it was like a proof of concept. So they're not like gonna make that anytime soon. But they're like, this is what it could look like. This is what it would be. And the video I was watching was talking about how um, they thought that that was kind of where things were going to head is that we were going to start launching it. Like in the future, everyone is going to have on glasses that are just showing us all the all the media we want just right in front of us at all times. Oh, yeah. I mean, I know that yeah. that, you know, that already exists. You know, they have like those like the Google lens or whatever they're called. And I mean, it's very minimal, like, hey, mom's calling or whatever. And then you go and pick up your phone and answer. But yeah, it's going to be crazy once, you know, probably Apple, I think is going to Apple and like Microsoft phones are probably going to be the two bigger people that are on the forefront of that, which yeah. probably cost like $10,000 for those glasses or whatever. <laughs> but it's true. I mean, even just like Norm, you just referenced like Niantic, like when Pokemon Go came out, that was like revolutionary because, oh, yeah. you know, we had, we had had apps, you know, where you could play games and fun stuff. But like we were all there for when like the iPod was first released, you know, and we would play these most basic games like Temple Run. And then Niantic came out with Pokemon Go and that was revolutionary because it would interact with or you would interact with it directly and you could like influence things. And we're just seeing more and more products. Like it's been awesome being able to be alive during all of these. Cause I mean, Mm -hmm. I think to when I was a kid, I would be playing an Xbox in black and white because 
the TV and the Xbox couldn't communicate color with each other. Like that's what I grew up with. You know, yeah. you grew up with like Game Boys where you'd need to shine a light on it because the screen didn't have yeah, light power in it. Yeah. You know? yeah. And now, I mean, one, we're communicating with each other through Zoom, but you think of like Spencer, you mentioned devices, you know, Apple watches and things like that. Like it's just incredible what they can do now, you know, so Ready Player One, like you said, may not be that far off. Yeah, it's yeah. only a matter of time before we're recording Goodland in a like a holographic <laughs> world around us, and we're like sitting Our own with each valley. other. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you can already do that. If we all had, if we all had VR, we That's could record true. this and and have like a camera like up here and on our faces and our yeah, no, faces. you're right. It totally, but, totally could. Definitely not holographic, but you know that's I guess the next step. But that's I yeah, not I, far off. I watched and I read Ready Player One, and the whole time I was like, "This is awesome!" You know, like I I want to I want to be in that game. And then like, kind of the more I think about it, I don't know if I would. Like, it's kind of bittersweet. Like, because I mean that kind of the I guess the point of that was showing you why it was dangerous. But like, yeah, yeah. I I personally I would I'm scared to have that not because it's violent or you know like it could be bad or whatever but i'm scared that i would just like like have you ever watched sword art online mm -hmm. and yeah like i mean not i'm not scared because i'll get stuck in it but i'll i'll, I'll be scared because i want to be stuck in it yeah it's like you know, a i would play for like thing. eight hours a day and i take off my headset it's like three or four in the morning i've worked in three hours i'm like where the time go you know like i was fighting yeah. demons or whatever you know but so I don't want to, I want it, but I don't, you know? Yeah. I feel that. Cause I mean, especially like our world's so crazy and chaotic, like you could plug in whatever video game you want, whether it's, you know, something kind of like Skyrim themed, you know, where it's medieval or futuristic, like you can just create anything that you want. And why would you want to leave that? You know, if yeah, you can no, exactly. custom make your world, like I, I feel in the same boat, Spencer, I would love to see that. But also, you know, I kind of hope I don't have that opportunity because I feel like yeah. I'm just going to waste away playing it and have a good time doing it. That's the thing. Yeah. Yeah. I, I know for a fact that I would not have the self-control to to be able to like leave and yeah. and like use it responsibly because like even now, like I just started a, a full time grown up job, like working at a bank and and even though it, it's it's awesome and the people are really cool, like part of me is like, but I would rather be doing the stuff that I like to do. Like I would rather be playing video games or watching movies. And so like, that's kind of the reason that I like fantasy and sci-fi so much is for that escapism. It's that surreal like adventures that I could never have in real life. But if I had like a Ready Player One system where I could make myself have those adventures, I don't think I could bring myself to leave it. I, I don't think yeah. I have the self-control to to cut myself off from that because I spend so much of my like actual time wishing I was doing something like that, that having the chance to do it, I don't think I could, I don't think I could not do it. Yeah, no, it's be hard. It'd be hard. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Dang. What do you think, like, to bring it back to movies, what do you think the next shift is going to be as far as movies? Because... I mean, we were kind of there when they made the shift to like, okay, 3D movies are a thing, you know, like you have these big mm -hmm. IMAX 3D movies and such. And, you know, now we have like movie theaters where they move the seats and such. What do you think the future is as far as that goes, as far as movies? Oh, like your movie experience, not the actual movie yeah, itself? Yeah, the movie experience. Yeah. Oh, man. I, I mean, video games, say... like, this is all something we know. Yeah, I, I feel like they are you know somewhat hand in hand the video game experience and the movie experience where i don't know if you guys have been to like like an imax like a new imax movie but i mean they get pretty crazy you know you have your speakers right here and like they kind of like movie a little bit i mean it's very very bottom of the barrel in the sense of um how far they can go but this is definitely the start of what they can do you know i feel like sooner or later you're gonna get your own like movie pods and it'll be like you know you'll have like a screen like this and 
you'll feel like that person. You know, I don't think it'll be like goggles or anything, but I definitely think you'll have like your own chair. It'll move and air will be blasting when there's explosions or, you know, whatever. But uh, I definitely think it's going to go towards that direction, maybe. Yeah. And, and like looking at like what Netflix has been doing, like what they had, like the, it was American Horror Story, I think. Um, that was kind of like a choose your own adventure and they did it with like I think it was like Minecraft story mode too like they made these shows where you could choose the outcome of it kind of like oh yeah a, uh, Black Mirror <laughs> oh Black Mirror yeah 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 yeah, yep. yeah um, I can't remember the the name of the season oh, but yeah I yeah. but um it, yeah it's totally like that where you you know you watch it and then it I mean I haven't watched either of them myself but from what I've gathered it's like a choose your own adventure where you get to make the decision of what the characters do i wouldn't be surprised if that kind of like what spencer was saying you get your own movie pod that you sit in and then you get to choose like what the story does um i mean not only is that a cool like kind of um like interactive thing and, and uh, immersion but at the same time like just business wise like if a movie has like eight different outcomes that's potentially eight movie tickets that you're buying to sit in a movie pod and, and see all yeah. the of it so um not only does it make like sense from a technological standpoint going forward but from business sense once you can start selling eight movie tickets for one person per movie um and, and like i already i saw like avengers endgame like three or four times and so if I see all eight endings and then decide I have one that I really like and want to see that one multiple times, like that's, that's just a ton of revenue. So I, I think that's true. Oh yeah. Yeah. I, I think that might yeah. be. And I mean like, yeah, I'm studying like marketing myself at college here and I just love that concept of being able to like market individually. Cause I mean, at this point, you know, most people like, you know, things like Endgame, like you mentioned, even if they're not into superheroes that much, just because they've done so well at marketing out it to other people. But if you can, you know, especially with how much Google and other companies are able to understand about our preferences and what we like and we don't like, if they can market a specific kind of custom made movie to people, that's just going to be incredible. It's going to be so easy for them to hand pick a movie, you know, that people like. And the thing is, is like most movies already when they produce, when they record, they already do like five different endings, you know, but we just never see them, you know, they just get cut out of the movie and then they have one final way. So they're already kind of recording multiple different endings and extended versions and such. So it'd be pretty simple to do, I think. Yeah, for sure. All they need to do is just leave it in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And uh, I mean, like, with the the Justice League, like the Snyder Cut that's going to start coming out on HBO Max here pretty soon, yeah. um, it's kind of that same thing where it's essentially two versions of the same film because you had the one that you know was Zack Snyder's vision before the executives came in and replaced him with uh, Joss Whedon, I think, is who did it, um, and then Joss Whedon made all those changes to the final version that we saw in theaters. Um, I guess it would kind of be like that, right? Like you're watching and then it would come up to a spot and it would be like, which, you know, which, what do you want to happen? Which scene do you want to do? Which version do you want to see? So it's, we're kind of almost there with the release of this, the, the Snyder cut coming out pretty soon. Yeah, for sure. Sure. But uh, yeah, I'm pretty excited for that. You know, um, it, I'm excited, but I'm not, if that makes sense. Uh, it's it's going to be weird because you're going to see some parts of the movie you've already seen, but then it's going to cut to like a completely new part. And it's going to be like, what, three and a half hours, I think I saw. And so that's just crazy that he added, you know, what, an hour and a half, two more hours to a movie that's already made. Yeah. But um, I'll definitely watch it just to see what all the hype is about yeah yeah I'm, I'm definitely planning on watching it but i like i just feel completely kind of apathetic towards it um 
And I think part of that is just because like, if you, if you look at Marvel, they've done such a good job building their cinematic universe. Like they have painstakingly left like clues in previous movies and like everything is meant to fit together. But then if you watch the DC movies, it's just so disjointed. And yeah. so it, it makes it hard to yeah. care about the films. Like, and, and that wouldn't usually be a problem, but the fact that it's marketed as a cinematic universe makes it hard to enjoy the films on their own. So when a, a DC movie like Joker comes out, and I, you know, Joker is it's pretty good, um, especially if you compare it to the slate of the movies that came before it, like Joker is awesome, but it's hard to, it's hard to care about it because it doesn't connect to anything else. Um, and it, it shouldn't be hard to enjoy a good standalone movie, but when you are marketing your films as connected, um, the one that doesn't fit into that, it just feels like, like, why did you make this instead of making you the series you already have better? You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 I completely agree. Definitely. Like my wife and I were, um, she agreed to watch through all the Marvel movies with me, which is great. I think to this point, we're up to Guardians of the Galaxy. And it's just great because you can see how everything builds up. You can see how everything's connected, you know? And yeah, if I skip one movie, it's not gonna be detrimental, but there are going to be parts that I'll miss that kind of add up and snowball up. But like you said, Norn, in, you know, the DC universe, it's just all disconnected, you know, completely different. I honestly, to this point, couldn't tell you what is like included in that universe and what is not. Yeah. I cannot tell you the order of things, you know, and I just can't. Um, but Marvel, I could do that easily just because they've oh, done such yeah. a good job. And it's, it's a shame. I'm not like predisposed to like Marvel more than DC. I love DC, you know, and Spencer, you mentioned their TV shows are great. You know, they do a lot of good things, but I just watching that cinematic universe it's just difficult it makes it difficult for me as a viewer you know and i like comics to begin with too so i can only imagine yeah and, and that's what makes it so hard for me to care about the snyder cut because like we already have justice league which is canon to that cinematic universe um i'm pretty sure that this new version of justice league isn't going to change that like i i I've done some some Googling stuff on it. And from what I've read, it doesn't sound like the Snyder Cut is going to replace the original Justice League in the canon. It's just going to be its own thing. So like it doesn't it doesn't matter because it doesn't affect anything. So there's almost to me, it feels like there's no point in doing it because it doesn't affect like it doesn't make the universe better. Like you're not if even if this Justice League is miles better than the first one, it has no effect because it doesn't replace it in the in the continuity of the DC cinematic universe that they've done. So it just feels kind of like this Yeah, that's that's weird. I never heard that and like you said, what's the point? Like why I mean, I I get the point, I guess, because Zack Snyder wanted to you know, give his point of view on what the movie should have been, but why not make it the movie that replaces it? Yeah, I, yeah, that's a little. Mm -hmm. That makes me not excited for it even more, because, like you said, what's the point? Yeah. Well, yeah. It, enough about things that we don't like. Spencer, <laughs> what what have you been playing these days that has been keeping you occupied? Let's switch over into um, things. Let's see. Um, recently, I've been. Well, hold on. Let me bring it back because I, I've i had a Switch since it came out mm -hmm. and I was really into it like with, you know, Zelda and like Mario Odyssey and all those games. And for some reason, it just kind of fizzled out my interest for the Switch. But recently, uh, Hades came out mm -hmm. and I got that for my Switch. And I think, let me see when I bought it. I bought it in November. And right now, you know, a couple months later, five months, I probably have already 700 hours into it. Just been gr grinding those like roguelike games. And then I, you know, I completely beat that game. And 
was kind of just like left with nothing to play. And I recently got Stardew Valley, which is, you know, a completely different type of game. Yeah, man. And I'm kind of obsessed with that right now. And like me and Quincy will just sit and play it for hours, you know, just hanging out, just farming stuff. So yeah. um, I, I've been really into that too. I absolutely love Stardew Valley. It is. Yeah. It's like, it doesn't seem like the kind of game that I would be that into, you know, cause it's, it's a farming simulator and almost in, in some ways, almost like a dating simulator too, with the relationships that you build with the yeah. people in the town, but it's, <laughs> It's just so quaint and it's so relaxing. Um, it is, it's just so fun and it's so easy to lose yourself in it and just feel good while playing it. Yeah. Like it really, it really has everything for any type of person. I mean, I didn't know that there was a combat uh, system in it. And then I went into the mines and they're like, oh, here's a sword. I'm like, what do I need a sword for? like there's slimes i'm like oh my god <laughs> so yeah it really is in my eyes one of the rare gems that are like perfect games yeah yeah and yeah. it's 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 price tag is super approachable too it's like 25 bucks or something like that um it was 14 bucks actually yeah yeah maybe so even yeah. cheaper yeah so, it's like like 15 bucks it's not bad at all yeah and yeah. it's and like Spencer was saying, it's it's a game that like anyone can enjoy because whether you like a kind of like randomly generated roguelike fighting sim or if you like the quiet farming of it um, or if you're if you like things that are story driven, like each character, each NPC has a well-written story with multiple chapters that you work to unlock to progress like it, it really has something for everyone in it. It's it's so good. Yeah, it is certified <laughs> good. Agree. Good certified, certified good. good. Yeah. We, and like we certified said last good episode, for the episode. Yeah, exactly. Like we said last time, those don't we don't just hand those out. You have to earn a certified good. And and Stardew Valley earns a certified good from Goodland. Thanks. So Spencer, what would you say is your favorite platform for gaming? You mentioned like the Switch, that's what you've been doing lately. But all around, what's your favorite platform? like console, whatever it is. I, I used to have an Xbox and then all my friends switched over to PC. So I sold my Xbox to, you know, get parts for my PC. And I'd, I'd have to say probably the PC just cause that's the, uh, you know, where I play the games the most at. Um, I like the Xbox, but I wish that the PC because like the P PC and Microsoft are, you know, like partnered up or whatever, mm -hmm. but it's so it's so minimal on what you're able to do with Microsoft on the PC. Because like they have the Game Pass, but that's about it. I mean, you can you can play with Xbox players, but you can also play with like PC players or uh, PS4 players on like Steam or you know whatever. But I'd say PC just because there's so much you can do with everybody else and there's endless possibilities of the types of games you can get and find and play so probably that it's true that's what i i grew up playing with like the playstation that was like my favorite um i was always playstation playstation 4 is where i gamed like the most um, and I had a little laptop and Norin and I would like play World of Warcraft with each other <laughs> and stuff, just some minimal gaming. But like now mm -hmm. that's what I'm in the process right now of like building my own PC, you know, so I'm trying to make sure I get all the parts and that's really hard with this pandemic going on. It's difficult, yeah. but that's definitely been like my favorite just because it encompasses so much, you know, is like, while I could get a PS5 and that could be awesome. Same with you know, the Xbox, like the PC, it's just hard to beat a lot of the functions. Plus, especially now, like we do so much online, you know, I, I work from home, you know, we're all meeting through the computer right now. So it's just all encompassing right now. Yeah. And it, it's so gratifying once you finish your build and you press the on button for the first time and everything works smooth, like no console can beat that. It was, you know, I had, I had, a buddy Connor 
of mine helped me build it. And, um, but it just, nothing beats that final, you click the button on and you see windows starting up. It's just, it's just good. It's like, uh, it's like Legos, but yeah, even more gratifying, right? <laughs> like you build yeah. it and you see it and you're like, this is awesome. And then you can also play video games on it. <laughs> yeah. Man, is it scary. I don't like it. It's so easy to, like, I had to have like a wrench. I, I, I stood on a wrench. So if I had any static, it would go to that wrench, not to my PC. Mm. Apparently, it's just so easy to fry your motherboard or your GPU or anything like that if you have even a little bit of static. So it's very intimidating, but it's very gratifying as well. So, yeah. Norin and I were talking when I like proposed, I told Norin like, Hey, I'm going to build a PC this year. I'm going to try and do it. And I invited Norin to, to join me along, but it, it's taken a lot. I've had to learn and pour through discord groups, through Reddit groups, yeah. just trying to figure out as much as I can. And I still feel like there's so much I don't know. I'm sure Norin, you can yeah. relate to that. And Spencer as well, you did it yourself. So yeah, I mean, I, I built my PC and I still don't know anything. About it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I wasn't going to build one because I have a, a really solid gaming laptop. And then just within the past like three weeks, my my little tank of a machine started to, to die out. Like the battery won't charge anymore. It just stays at a static percentage. And it's it's just starting to slowly peter out and... And so I was like, well, I guess I do need to do that thing now. <laughs> so yeah. I've just started the process of, of trying to research and, and, and get into building one. So I'm, I'm excited to experience that Spencer, like that, that gratification that comes at the end of it. Yeah. Not the pizza. It. It's perfect. Stick with us and see if Norin and Michael ever do actually build a computer. <laughs> if we can build a certified good PC. <laughs> Yeah. Spencer, what's your favorite game of all time? Oh, wow. Let me see. Oh, that's easy. Kingdom Hearts series. Hmm. That's whenever whenever I think of like a video game, my mind always just like finds its way back to Kingdom Hearts 2 specifically. Um, I mean, I never played any of, any of the like rechain of memories or kingdom hearts two and a half or anything like that but um that's like what me and my brother almost played exclusively that and midnight club but um yeah just i mean my brother just texted me i think yesterday saying something about the irs sounds like the or the hold music for the irs sounds like the overworld music in traverse town in kingdom hearts too and that has to be one of the most iconic video games for me specifically, which it's, it's really weird series, but it's hard not to, it's hard not to like for, yeah. for my brother, but yeah, that has to be number one for me. Michael, what about you? What's your number one? Um, I would probably, it'd be between Minecraft or Skyrim. I'd probably say Skyrim just because that was like, I grew up playing that. That was just so much fun. And I'm still playing it to this day, you know, like I'll hop on and I'll play some other games every once in a while, but Skyrim, I just stick with. And I always compare other games to Skyrim. Like, oh, does it have a map that's as large and, you know, as big as Skyrim? Are there side quests that I can do? Can I customize my character like I can in Skyrim? So it always like comes back. And I think like my soul is happy and content to stay playing Skyrim for like the end of my days, which is funny because when I was a kid, I always used to wonder why my uncles would still play all of their old games. You know, I was like, man, the graphics aren't as good as these new games. Why do they keep playing these old games that came out when they were young? And now I totally understand why, you know, I could happily play, you know, my glitchy, buggy Skyrim, you know, with low quality and people can go play their games in 4K over here, and I would be content. <laughs> yeah. It's it's pretty crazy how big an effect that Skyrim had on on gaming. Like, if you think about it, I, I 
I don't think I realized how old that game was. Like it, it came out originally on the Xbox 360 and like, yeah. Yeah. What was it? Like 2010, I think. I might be making that up. Let me really? Go. Yeah. It was, it yeah, was like 2010 to 2013, crazy. I think. When did yeah, start? I think I think that's I think that's the right time frame. Twenty eleven. I remember twenty eleven. Twenty eleven. Wow. Yeah, ten years. Ten years out with and Elder Scrolls. Yeah, game. it'll be ten years this year in November, and and to think that it has been that that, that it's still relevant is is insane. Like it had such an impact, and like lately, yeah. Um, Twitter has been, every, you know, like every open world game that comes out now that has like bright colors and stuff people are saying that it's like a breath of the wild clone um Hmm. but if you think about it like i wonder if breath of the wild i I don't know if breath of the wild would have been the game that it is without skyrim because if you think about it skyrim is kind of like breath of the wild where it's this big expansive world where you can go around and do whatever um so I, i can't help but think that like the, the new game that everything is getting compared to, you know, everything's getting compared to Breath of the Wild. I, I don't even know if it would be here without Skyrim. Like, I think it just... Oh, yeah, there's no way. Yeah, I think it just changed the, the landscape yeah. of gaming forever. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It did. And they're making a new one. Like, I think it was, like, a year ago, they literally just released, like, an image panning up from, like, the oh, map. Yeah. And it just said, mm-hmm. like, you know... Elder Scrolls, whatever. And that was like over a year ago, I think. I may be wrong, but it was over a year ago. And I'm like still excited to this day. I think something deep inside my soul is just waiting <laughs> for the next Skyrim just yeah. to test it out, see what it's like. I hope it lives up. You know, it's it's got to. <laughs> I, yeah. I think that was in 2019 because I think it was at the last E3 before the pandemic that they released that. Yeah. Um. So I think that was in 2019, but it's, yeah, you're right. I, I hope it lives up to it. Cause it's, it's insane. Cause I like before Skyrim, I hadn't really, I don't think the El- I mean, the Elder Scrolls series was around, but I don't think it was near as big as it is. I think Skyrim was really the one that made the Elder Scrolls like a household name. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. I remember yeah. Oblivion was kind of big when it came out i know me and my brother played that but as soon as like skyrim came out we just dropped everything and played that it was oh yeah nuts about the craze that was about that game i i mean i still remember when it came out and we rushed to walmart stood in line for like two hours to get it for the 360 and yeah just such an iconic release that and halo but yeah yeah it's it's funny to think about how many times I've bought Skyrim over the years too. Oh, I think like eight times. Honestly. I bought it multiple platforms. <laughs> yeah, like I had it for the 360. I had it for the Xbox One. I have it on my PC. I have it on my Switch. Like I've yeah, I've bought it so many times. <laughs> yeah, and it just it's kind of like GTA Five because I think I've bought that copy like four different times, and. There's, I mean, they're still releasing stuff for GTA 5, and it's been what six years, I think. Yeah, like, I think it came out in 2015. Mm-hmm. But I mean, like, good for them because there's you know still dropping like deals or like free DLC packs and yeah, <laughs> different heists and stuff you like remember that. When they did the uh, the uh, big announcement presentation for the PS5, and GTA 5 was one of the Games that, <laughs> one of the first games they announced for the launch lineup for the PlayStation 5. <laughs> yeah. Like, this game was like eight years old. <laughs> and it was one of the launch titles. That they oh my about. gosh. I forgot about that. But that, yeah. Hilarious. Well, what's your uh, what's your favorite game? I, I, I think I already know, but what about you, Norm? Um, this, is, this is a tough question, but I think... I, I think you're right, Spencer. You probably do already know. I think I'm going to have to go with World of Warcraft. Um, I just have so many like memories tied to it. My dad and I used to play all the time together growing up, and it was something we could do. Like I'd come home from school and turn on my laptop, and then him and I would would run dungeons and stuff. Um, and it, I just I really like the lore and the story behind it because it's so thought out, and it is just a world that is 
is so like you can do anything in it there are people who um there's a couple people who every time there's a new expansion and the level cap changes and you know you can level up more they go in and they reach max level just like without killing anything they do it just by like gathering flowers and stuff like that and fishing um so like you can you can play the game any way you want there are servers for for role players if you're into that um you know you can you can delve down that rabbit hole if you want um that's a scary side that i haven't <laughs> <delved> into <laughs> um it's a little little steep for me a little too scary but uh <laughs> um but if that's something you're into you know you can do it like that and write out these cool stories with these people that you meet or you can do like the pvp servers where everything is just you know it's a full battle for survival everywhere you go or if you want to just be a fisher and just pick flowers all day and make potions and stuff like you can do that you can do anything in it and so that freedom and that expansive world is just it's really awesome. It's yeah, true. I remember that uh, me and Connor, we got into it for about, well, one month because that's how much you could play without, like, you, I, we bought a one month subscription. Yeah. And we got really into it, actually. We played it, like, every night for a couple hours. And I can't remember why. I think I just was too broke to keep up with the, the, the subscription. But I've always regretted not getting into it and i mean i was into this game when i was a little kid it's called free realms it was oh, very yeah. yeah world of war like world of war world world <laughs> why can't i say it world of warcraft God. and um i remember getting into that and i don't know why i, I mean because i love that game and world world of warcraft god i can never say that um is very similar, but I don't, I don't ever remember or know why I never got into it. I'm, I always regret that decision of not doing that. It's yeah. uh, no, no go, Michael. We've play, we played pretty regularly for a while, Morin, right? And we even got like some of our other friends to join us too. Mm -hmm. But I know, especially you and I, there was like a period of like a year to six months where we were just like, that's just the game that we play together. Yeah, and we we had a good time i love just like leveling up a character you know just trying it out it was a lot of fun yeah i that's probably my favorite thing about gaming and i'm not i'm not very good at jumping into games and playing with other people like i don't i don't play with others as much as i should but because my best memories of gaming are playing with other people like michael when we used to spend the night at my house and play halo reach until like yeah. 3 a.m. and we'd we'd go on forge and we'd make our own maps and and just stay <laughs> up all night yeah. playing. That's something that like isn't as common these days because before it was every game had like you know four person split screen and you'd all play together. And that, that's what we did and that was so fun. Like that was one of my favorite parts of gaming. Yeah. The four I remember just staying up all night doing forge with just us four players and like like putting tape and then putting blankets so you couldn't like you know like screen, screen size feet, for screen the person. yeah <laughs> and yeah i remember doing that with like that and like call of duty modern warfare 2 and yeah those were i think gold era of uh multiplayer gaming in in that sense i guess yeah. but, i i prefer split screen uh way more to like over online because i like being able to sit next to the person i'm playing with um and, and you know that's not that's hard to do nowadays for a lot of reasons like not just because of the pandemic but just because it's now that i'm older it feels harder to carve out time to go to someone's place and sit next to them and play video games yeah so i just i kind of miss those days of of innocence where you could just come over after school and sit on a couch next to your best buddy and, and mm -hmm. play games <laughs> yeah that was some of the times. best times all right well i think we're about at time here um spencer it was so good to have you thanks for coming to good land thank you thank you yeah and uh michael thank you for coming <laughs> 
Yeah, of course. I love it here. This is, I hang out here all the time, even when we're not <laughs> meeting. So <laughs> yeah, just, just roll into good land and hang out. It's, it's so colorful. Uh -huh. It's so, it smells really good all the time in good land. <laughs> it's it's true. true. It does smell really good. Yeah. The weather's great always. So, you know, it's just a good place to be. <laughs> <laughs> Spencer, you can pick a favorite rock or a favorite stick and bring it back with you. <laughs> but that's Sweet. all you can take. <laughs> that's just yeah. one? Just one? All right, you got it. <laughs> just, just make a good one. Yeah, that's yeah, all you can't can take. Ruin the beauty. That's really all we have is just rock. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. That's fine with me. All right. Well, everyone, thank you so much for listening. Um, don't forget to check us out on our socials uh, at Goodland Pod. Um, you know, leaving a, leaving a rating on iTunes really helps us. Um, subscribing and liking to the YouTube video. If you're watching us through there, that helps. Um, and, and just tell people about us, you know, um, good land, good land is big. You know, the Valley here is, we got room for everybody. So come, come on and, uh, come move to the, move to good land with us. <laughs> um, but yeah, everyone, thank you so much. This has been good land. And I'm glad that you're alive. <laughs>